how does exercise affect blood sugar? I'm going to be talking about that in this video. Check it out. Let's go. Hi, welcome. I'm Coach Tanya with Critical Bench. And in this video today, I'm going to be talking all about how exercise affects our blood sugar. But before I get into that, I'd like you to check out that pinned comment below. This is a free cravings report. If you click that link and enter your email, I can send that to you right now. This is a great tool basically just to help you manage your cravings and help curb your appetite. So check that out. All right, so exercise and blood sugar. Well, when we exercise, our body requires energy from blood sugar and we get that um, from the food that we eat, okay? And it, at the end, it's called glucose, okay? So our body takes glucose and uses that for energy to help us do the things that we do in the day. Now, when we do something like a sprint, so you go um, run up the stairs or you're running after your child, okay? your muscles and your liver release glucose for fuel. So that's quick, that's a very quick, like you need it right now, it's a burst of energy and your body takes that and it fuels those cells to help you do that, all right? Now when we do a moderate exercise, so maybe you're going for a hike, maybe you're going for a bike ride, um, you know, maybe you're out kayaking for an afternoon, your muscles require a lot more. Okay, they, it's that, this isn't a sprint. <laughs> this is a, several hours long of an activity, so you need a more consistent um, supply of this glucose to fuel that activity. And this is what helps to lower blood sugar. However, to be more specific, exercise does lower blood sugar over a 24 hour period, but sometimes it can also briefly raise your blood sugar following a workout. Stay with me on this. Overall, even your moderate exercise, such as a walk, and this doesn't mean like, not those, you know, speed walkers, just a walk. You're out walking for half an hour, 40 minutes. It's going to raise your heart rate, it's going to increase your breathing, and it's going to also boost your muscle activity. So all of these increases, heart rate increase, breathing increase, the boost in muscle activity, all of those increases of those body systems need fuel, so they need sugar. Okay, they need sugar so you can keep doing them. Now, some of the sugar comes from your bloodstream, all right? But some of it also comes from glucose that's stored in your muscles and your liver. And this is the key to that 24 hour um, blood sugar lowering effect that exercise gives us. So, you know, your, your body is pooling from these resources and burning that glucose off so you know, to give you the fuel you need to do these activities. And so that's helping to lower blood sugar because it's using it up, it's burning it up, all right? So over that 24 hours following that exercise, you come back from your walk or your hike, you know, your body is now gonna start restocking these reserves, okay? It's gonna start restoring that. Um, and slowly but steadily, it's going to be sucking sugar out of your bloodstream, okay? Because even when you're finished doing an activity, your body is still, it, it's still requiring energy. So it's not like I walked for 30 minutes, I used, blood, I used glucose for 30 minutes, now I'm done. No, it's going to continue to use that over a period of time, all right? So if that's the case, then, you know, if that, those, those spurts of exercise and those times of activity, if this is the process of what's happening, which is helping to lower blood sugar, why does exercise sometimes raise blood sugar, but for a short period of time? And the most common, the most common way is usually from stress hormones. So what that means is that any workout that's greater than moderate, okay, is going to release adrenaline. And that's basically pouring sugar into your system. It's not a bad thing, you need it. Um, if you're doing a powerlifting event, or you're doing anything that's higher than just that um, calm walk or just a walk, even if you're walking at a more brisk pace, okay? Anything that requires more intensity is going to cause that release of adrenaline, all right? And it's because your body needs it. It knows what it's doing, right? Now, it doesn't mean that strenuous exercise is a bad thing, though. It just means that you need to accept that when that event is over, there's go probably going to be a slight increase in your blood sugar, especially if you break a sweat, okay? so. If you're doing something and it's causing you to break a sweat, you're probably gonna have a short spike in blood sugar immediately following that. Now, not a lot of us are walking around testing our blood glucose right after everything that we do. But if you were to do that, you would notice this, 
and I don't want you to get all excited about it because the good news is that adrenaline, it's a, sh it's a short acting sugar. So essentially your body's gonna like clean it all up rather quickly and you're still gonna get that 24 hour lowering effect of blood sugar from your exercise. The other reason as to how exercise can increase your blood sugar has to do with the availability of insulin in your system, all right? So if your insulin level is low, you can't move sugar from your blood into your cells where it's needed, okay? And this, this can be problematic. Um, so this means that basically your cells don't even know it's there. So they're needing the fuel, they're needing that glucose, but they don't even know it's there because your insulin levels are so low that they, they can't even pick up on the fact that it's available, or that any is available. So they're essentially blind um, to the fact that there's any sugar at all for them to use. And when that happens, they just assume that there isn't any sugar available to them, so they send out signals like SOS, need some sugar, <laughs> okay? And they send out these signals specifically to the liver and kidneys um, to let them know, like, we need fuel. And this causes a further, this will cause an increase in blood sugar levels that may already be too high to start with. So that's where it can cause problems. You can run into trouble. Um, some of you may, may know people who are diabetic, type two diabetic. So um, as far as exercise affecting your blood sugar, it does. It's not really a bad thing unless you are someone who has low insulin levels. And this is something you do need to monitor and you need to make sure that as far as your diet, you're really staying on track with that. Um, you're following through, you're, you're doing the little um, tests, glucose tests to make sure that you're okay, you know, your glucose levels, your blood sugar levels are good. Um, because if you don't, that could spiral into something that's not very good for you. Um, at the end of the day, exercise, <laughs> although exercise can have, can have that very short, um, and very non-threatening spike in your blood sugar, exercise is still very important. Again, that spike is very quick. It doesn't last long. And then you're going to get that 24 hour lowering of blood sugar after the fact. And that's why people that continuously and consistently exercise on a regular basis, as well as follow excellent nutrition practices, tend to have lower blood sugar. Now there are other issues or instances, health issues, medications, lots. I mean, I can do a video on the importance and the value of good nutrition and regular exercise to keeping you ultimately like really healthy. And that's gonna go a long way for anything. However, people have stuff. <laughs> How's that for a very clinical term? People have stuff. People have, they get sick, they get sick or they fall ill and they take medications or they're doing certain treatments and these things impact the body systems. And so it's going to impact things like your liver, your kidneys, your heart rate, um, how your body uses insulin or whatnot. I mean, it, all of these things impact. You've got this house of cards. Okay. And when you move one, it doesn't mean everything comes, okay, house of cards, those may be bad because if you move one, it all falls down. More like dominoes. Okay. Everything impacts the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. However, doing as much of the good things as possible is going to have such a tremendous impact in reducing your potential to becoming a statistic. It's going to go a long way in terms of when, when or if something goes south, you know, you do become sick or you do find you need some kind of treatment. All of these really good habits and practices and behaviors that you've implemented, that you've been consistent with are going to have massive impact on how that turns out. So, what I was starting to say was that overall consistent exercise is a great way to help manage blood sugar levels as well as excellent nutrition. It doesn't mean that it's the only thing that you can do and it may mean that sometimes it isn't always working optimally for you because of other things that are happening and that are going on. Um, you know, I'm maybe getting a little bit off topic here because I think I've said all I can really say about blood exercise and blood sugar can be a very short spike right after, but long the next 24 hours, it's a blood, uh, it's a lowering of blood sugar. So if you think about it, if you're consistent with exercise, you're going to may be able to maintain lower, healthier blood sugar levels for the rest of your life. Other things can happen that can impact and implement that. 
but I want to end the, the video talking about what your behaviors are like because this is, I mean, at the end of the day, this all comes down to what your behaviors are. What are the behaviors and patterns that you have set in place now that you're sticking to that you become consistent with? Because these are all the things that add up to how life looks for you moving forward. These are all the things that when you add them up have the greatest impact on when something happens that you didn't plan for, how your body responds, how your body responds to that event and how your body responds to treatment and even what kind of treatment and how intense the treatment you're going to need. Um, doing more of the good things now is a huge investment for later. Because the body gets slower, we do get older, things maybe don't work as well as they did when we were 15 and 20 but they can still work really well if we make the investment and develop really excellent patterns of behavior to support all that so the greatest limit is in what we're choosing not to do what we're choosing to not be aware of um, because we all know there's there's those of us out there that would rather just don't I don't I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing because this feels good I enjoy this and if something bad happens I just don't want to know I'm just gonna whatever that's a personal choice I don't know why you choose that but that's a personal choice so establishing behaviors and patterns you can start doing that at any time maybe you didn't uh, have the best of pat best patterns of uh, like best lifestyle patterns and behaviors in your early years that's okay you might be watching this and you might be you know well into middle age or a little older you can still start you can still start you don't have to have a rock star start you just have to have a start and that might mean when this video is over you get up and you put on your running shoes and you walk around the block that is a start and that's a commendable start and then maybe you do that again tomorrow and then maybe do it twice the next day um, because that is exercise that's going to have a great impact on your blood sugar as well as your mental health just your overall health your bones everything I'm getting I'm getting into everything here in this video um, and this is what happens when I start talking about something that I'm really really like oh, I just really I really, really want to say this I start talking about exercise and blood sugar which I have but it does come back to what are you willing to do are you willing to be consistent and are you willing to be accountable to yourself Yeah, that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> All right, before you go, please make sure you check out that pink comment for that free cravings report. Enter your email. I will send that to you right now. I'm Coach Tanya. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Any comments or questions, I'd love to hear them. And uh, if you do that frequently in our videos, you do know that I go in there and I will answer you and have a little conversation with you if, if that's what you're looking for. Also, please don't forget to click on that subscription button and little notification bell so you never miss any of our great video content. Thank you so much for watching. Be fit, be healthy, be well. Start one amazing pattern of behavior today that supports an optimal lifestyle, okay? I'll talk to you soon.